you're not happy about certain things. I'm pissed, really pissed. All of us homeless people, it sucks. How can you understand what I'm going? Have you ever been homeless? Have you ever slept outside because you don't have a place to sleep? Have you ever had to beg for food? Then you can't understand and I don't want to hear it. I went out to witness at a local park where homeless people usually gather and ended up meeting five people who were sitting under a pavilion. There was one gentleman who right off the bat started to cuss at us, but we stayed persistent because we knew that God had sent us there to talk to them. One of the guys ended up getting saved and we prayed for several others. And eventually the guy who originally cussed at us began to open up about his life and said he was living in a lot of pain, not only physical, but emotional and mental pain too. This 72 year old man said that his brother had killed five of his family members, including their own parents. He also expressed a lot of anger about how other parts of his life hadn't gone as planned and how many people had mistreated him. Stay tuned to see all that happened and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. You said you believe in Jesus, right? Yeah. Okay. What, what about you, sir? Do you have any beliefs? I believe it. I like to keep it to myself. Okay, that's fine. If anything were to happen to you, do you know that you'd spend eternity with God? I would think it would. Are any of you willing, according to even the, the message that I just shared with you, any of you willing to obey Jesus as your king and have him rescue you from your current life? I've been doing it for 72 years. That yeah. I'm stuck at the Salvation Army. Okay. Well, I can I can pray for you here here in a minute. Is there is there anybody else? What about you? I've I've prayed with you before, Raven. Uh, do do you feel like you're I guess sticking with it? Not really. Okay. What it? What about you? I believe in them, but I don't always follow the right path. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you willing to ask him to help you to follow the right path every time? Yeah. yeah, that's good. The majority of Jesus' ministry was not in a church. The majority of Jesus' ministry was out in public, on mountainsides, in cities, things like that. So we can talk to God right here and right now, and He'll do that very thing. The Bible says, if we confess Jesus as our Lord and believe that God raised Him from the dead, then you will be saved. So if we'll do this part, it says God will do the other part, saving us. So let's just talk to Him right now, and I'll just, I'll just lead you through a prayer. Just say, God in, heaven, God in heaven, I ask you to forgive me, you to forgive me. Of, all of, my sins. of all of my sins. I turn away from sin today, I away from sin today. And, I believe and I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, I Jesus Christ is Lord. that he died for my sins, died for my sins. and that you raised him from the dead. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. My whole life is yours. Like in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Can I pray for you? Pray for yeah. What, what, what was your name? Mike. Mike. Okay. Can I put my hand on your shoulder? Yeah. Father, I thank you for Mike. God, I thank you for his life. I decree that you're free from every sin by the blood of Jesus being shed for you. And in the authority of Jesus Christ, you're loosed from every sin. Jesus name, every generational curse is broken now. Bible says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. So I decree be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus name. Lord, I thank you that you're forcing out any unclean spirits. I command any unclean spirits to go right now in Jesus name. He doesn't belong to you any longer. I command every unclean spirit to go right now in Jesus name. All shame, all guilt be removed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of murder that would try to even take his life, I command you to go now. In Jesus' name, any spirit of death, leave right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You're not going to die at a young age. That's a lie that's been spoken over you. You've even had a few, uh, a few instances where the enemy tried to take your life. But God has saved you. God has preserved you because he has an amazing plan for your life. Because God knew that this day would happen. You're free from all the power of the enemy. Jesus' name, peace. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for it. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. 
Amen. 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 God loves you, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loves you so much. You had any times where you were close to death? I think a couple. A couple times? The enemy tried to take you out, but, but God, God protected you. If you'll continue to follow Jesus' lead and you won't go back in like we were talking about five years from now, man, you'll look back and you'll, you'll be able to do one thing. Put your hands in the air and praise God for what he's done in your life. I'm telling you, man, he's got an incredible, an incredible plan for you. Man, I'm telling you, I, I see you ministering to like drug addicts. I see you ministering to, to guys who have had like a rough upbringing, you know, who have been in some of the worst places and done some of the worst things. I just even see you like baptizing people, like baptizing guys who are just giving their life fully to Jesus. I see God using you to just baptizing guys and you, you guys like rejoicing. You guys being like pumped up um, in, a, in a good way. Um, but yeah, man, that's part of God's plan. He's got so much more for you, but that's part of God's plan for your life. Could, could I pray for you? Of course. Yeah. Well, Father, I thank you. Do me a favor. Yes, sir. One little thing. What's that? Make it short. Make it short. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. All right. Father, I thank you for Caesar. God, I thank you for your amazing plan for his life. Um, God, I thank you that you're drawing him closer to you and revealing uh, just absolute truth to him um, so that he doesn't look to the left or to the right, but he knows that Jesus, you are the way, that you are the path, that you are the truth. Lord, I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, help him to have a completely open heart to what you desire to speak to him. And Lord, even what you desire to remove from his heart, to remove from his life, his mind, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you, sir. Can I pray for you, sir? I know it sounds like you've had some, you're not happy I'm, I'm, about certain things. I'm pissed, really pissed. Being true. Yeah, that's good. I mean, being honest. That's one thing you'll find out about me. I don't lie. I did once. Good judge. <laughs> but you get a kick out of it. I didn't want to be in grand jury duty. I said, I hate judges, I hate lawyers, I hate cops, I hate firemen, I hate any authority. He said, yeah, you're just what we're looking for. <laughs> what do you feel like God's plan has been for your life? I have no idea. You don't know? All I know is I'm on short, short time. Jesus said it this way. He said, only those who do the will of my Father Winter into his kingdom. So that means it's possible for us to do the will of the Father. Um, and it's usually not something that we accidentally do, but it's something that we know is his will and it's something that we can be intentional about in, uh, in obeying him and, and loving him. The obedience part, it's always comes from a loving place. You, you had said like you served Jesus and you were a Christian. To not know what his plan was for your life means that you weren't intentionally doing what he desired for you to do and what he even commanded you to do, um, which would be what truly, you know, a disciple of Jesus or a follower of Jesus is, is really intentionally doing that. So to kind of blame it on him that you're in this situation. I'm not blaming anybody. Okay. I am not blaming him. Yeah, okay. I, I guess I just took that because of how, how angry you said you are and kind of what you said. I've had a lot of, so much, so much. Pain. I don't know why. And it continues. And I've been, I've been going to church since I was four years old. <laughs> a lot of good it did me. A lot of f good it did me. Look where I am. And Salvation Army is not the place to go. The hypocrites. <laughs> they are Christian. I asked them, I said, you're supposed to be Salvation Army here. How come you don't have any flags up? Oh, I didn't realize we did. Oh, you've been here a year and a half. You don't know that. They're supposed to care about us over there. We'll help you, anything you need. I had a place to go look at. I need a right to get there. Yeah, 10 o'clock. Come 10.30. Oh, I forgot. Let's do it tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be too late, we'll be gone. Sure enough, it was. What's some of the pain? You were talking about some pain. I thought he just explained it. Yeah, I really did. I honestly <laughs> thought he just said it. 
<laughs> Physical pain. Physical pain. Oh. Three knee replacements. This one here still isn't right yet. I mean, there's nothing they can do. Open heart surgery. Deaths in the family. My brother being the direct and indirect cause of five of them. Five of them. And, you know, why? 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 I don't understand. His own seven year old grand granddaughter. But, hey, it is what it is. I can't believe. I believe somebody else is next. Your brother, in the sense of, was it like a car wreck or? Yeah, he was. I mean, what happened? Careless, driving his boat. Slammed into one of those big ocean buoys. Going full throttle in his boat. Killed his granddaughter, killed his girlfriend, his grandson. It looked like it cut. Somebody took a pair of scissors in his mouth. And went from here, right up to here. Cut his mouth right out, they couldn't go. My aunt, he was working with her. They got out of work and being a cocky prick, the look at her says, I'll race you to the ice cream place. He jumped in his Jeep, took off, dirt flying, rocks flying. Never stopped to see if she's okay. She never showed up. They, this was Saturday, noontime. They found her Monday morning, still at work. Half in her car, half out of her car. Dead, but the animals had gotten to her. My mother and father, he was remodeling his house. I don't know if you know anything about plaster and lab. It's Cuss genetic place was flying with dust and everything. My father fell, broke his hip. My brother put him in his Jeep, in his truck. Says, Come on, let's go. We're going up to Vermont to see grandkids for Christmas. He ended up with a blood clot in his hip, died. Huh. My mother dies of, she couldn't breathe from all the dust. It was five. All in her family. So why does it happen? Why does it happen? I mean, I need help. I'm not getting it. Something to think about, huh? And pray about. Yeah. The thing that I've seen in my time, you know nothing about. The thing that he's seen in his time, there's no way you can know anything about it. You can have sympathy, empathy, but you can never walk in the shoe. Sunday morning, say, of church over at Salvation Army this past Sunday. They say pray for everybody. And anything you want to ask we can pray about? I said, yeah. All of us homeless people, it sucks. And a lady says, well, I can understand what you're going through. Mm -hmm. And she starts going, because when I was younger, you know, we used to count pennies. I said, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. How can you understand what I'm going? Have you ever been homeless? She says, no. Have you ever? slept outside because you don't have a place to sleep? She says, no. Have you ever had to beg for food? She says, no. Then you can't understand, and I don't want to hear it. You're full of it. You're lying. You can't understand. Shut her right up. You know a Christian place? Right before I respond to him, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. And if the Lord leads you, you can financially partner with us through ko-fi.com slash Nicholas Bowling. And if you're interested in spreading the gospel with a shirt like this one, you can find them at nicholasbowling.com. There are terrible things that happen. And I, I know you guys have been through some of them, uh, and some people have been through way worse. But what I can say is, God understands, one, even though I might not understand what you're going through or someone else might not understand your life because you're the one who walked through it. You're the one who experienced it. You're the one who had the emotions. But God does understand. And Jesus being absolutely perfect, never committing one thing wrong. Like we've, we've messed up. We've deserved some of the things. I'm not saying all of it. Don't, that's not what I'm saying at all. We've deserved some of the bad things that happen in our life, but Jesus, he never deserved one bad thing to happen to him because he was perfect. He never sinned. He always loved. Every word he spoke, every deed he ever did, he was loving and he was doing what was right. He was doing the Father's will. But Jesus, 
was kidnapped in the middle of the night, tortured, taken in. Maybe we've had some pain in our body. But Jesus was kidnapped, taken in, falsely accused. They made up a bunch of lies about him, smacked him in the face, spit in his face, shredded his back with a whip in different parts of his body, ended it with driving nails to his hands and nails to his feet while he was naked, did it in front of his mother, did it in front of his friends, and did it on a, a roadside where tons of people traveled, traveled past it and traveled down it. And he was literally perfect. He never committed one crime. They did it because they were jealous of him. So Jesus was really wronged, really sinned against in a huge way when he was absolutely perfect. So he can understand going through something, especially when you don't feel like you deserved it or something terrible is happening in your life. He can understand because he went through some, probably the most painful thing. And then God raised him from the dead on the third day. And how does that, yeah, how does that apply to us? What, what's the point of that? Well, the point is Jesus can rescue us from all that stuff. If we think right now is bad and we've been through some things, Imagine a lake of fire and brimstone for all of eternity with no hope of ever getting out. The Bible says the smoke of their torment rises up for all of eternity. So there's a, there's a real punishment that's coming at the end of the age. And the Bible says this too. We ought to forgive just as He has forgiven us. In the prayer that you mentioned earlier, it says, forgive us even as we have forgiven those who sin against us. So I'm not belittling or taking away from any of the, the wrongs that have been done to you or been done to your loved ones or any of the terrible things that have happened in life. But I can attribute that to one free will, but also the devil. He's full of wrath. He's full of anger. He's full of hatred. And he wants to destroy and kill. And he wants to do way worse and more vulgar things than people did. But Jesus came to rescue people from that and then to rescue people even from the eternal punishment of our own wrongs that we've done. And we can literally be in a perfect place. Like if we think that we're in such a terrible place and we just wanna die and get this thing over with, it's gonna be way worse on the other end without Jesus and without forgiving each and every person who has screwed us over or anyone else in our lives. We can complain about it and we can be mad about it and we can say this and that, and we can flip God off and say, look, if you were really good, or look, if this really happened, why did all this happen? And we can really try to show God something with a little bit of influence and things that we have. But when it comes down to it, do we want to be in that place of, of eternal separation and eternal punishment by just saying, hey, God, you know, screw you, because if you were really good, then why'd you let all this happen? We can go down that way, but that's not God's will. That's not I'm God's plan. I'm no, not I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying those are some schemes of the enemy and some plots of the enemy of what he's trying to do. But if we'll truly turn to him, regardless of how terrible our life's been, God can truly heal our hearts and he can heal your bodies even today. He can heal you from all the pain that's there. And it says that he can work all things to the good to those who love him. And then if you can imagine an eternity in an absolutely perfect place, no more pain, no more death, no more sorrow. And being with Him, He's the source of everything good. He is love, He is peace, He is joy. To be with Him for all of eternity is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing, even if we did go through suffering that was here on the earth. So to truly follow Him, even if it's right now in your life, and I'm not saying that you're not or that you haven't, I'm just saying the concept of truly asking for forgiveness for our stuff. We can point the finger at everyone else, but they're gonna be accountable before Him on Judgment Day too. But if we can ask for forgiveness and turn away from all that stuff, even our heart motives, even our thoughts, even our intents, even the unforgiveness um, of people who have sinned against us and sinned against other people and all this stuff that even you're talking about your brother, asking God to help you, that's, that's not something I think you could do on your own. I don't think it's possible for someone to even let all that go on their own. But I can tell you all things are possible for God and He can help you to completely forgive everything and everyone and, and to know that you're at peace with Him. And, and that comes with, like I said, Jesus said, only those who do the will of my Father will enter into His kingdom. So that's a place of Him empowering us, not that we're working our way to heaven, 
but he comes and he saves us and sets us free. And then he lives inside of us and he helps us to actually do that will. The Holy Spirit begins to empower us and it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. And we're able to actually do his will. For instance, the guy on the cross, the thief, he turned on the cross. He put his trust in Jesus on the cross. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. So he had mercy on a person who only had a few minutes, maybe a few hours uh, to live while he was hanging on the cross. God had mercy for him because he truly turned his heart towards him. And if he was to go on and live, that guy would have continued to do the will of God. So it doesn't matter how early in life or how late in life we turn to, to God. His mercy is perfect and he can work it all to the good. So w with that being said, I'm not going to try to I'm not trying to get something out of you or trying to get no, you to. Uh, yeah. What you're saying is I've been turning to him. Uh, 72 years and I'm waiting. When does it f***ing end? Is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to find out. The answer is never. Bingo. Be truthful with you. Never because we're on this. Yep. I'm gonna be We've like been you. born in sin because we were born in a world that was imperfect. No, so listen, it can end to the point of we only go through the sufferings of Christ. So Jesus, the way that he suffered was hatred for men, reproach of men, people plotting to kill him, people eventually killing him, people wanting to stone him, people wanting to do these things, people rejecting him, making fun of him, his own brothers, uh, mocking him. Those were the sufferings of Christ. Jesus didn't suffer with sickness and disease. Jesus didn't suffer with unclean spirits that were in him tormenting him. Jesus didn't suffer with leprosy. He didn't suffer a lot of these terrible things. Jesus didn't suffer in that way. So when we truly come to him from that moment forward, the Bible says that he'll even give us authority over unclean spirits and over every kind of sickness and every kind of disease to where we can live in a place where we don't have sickness, where we don't have disease, where our bodies can be healed, where things like that can happen. I have a question for you when you get a chance. Yeah, go ahead. Do you feel that you've been healed by Jesus? I know that I have. Do you feel that all badness in this world can't touch you now? There's a Bible verse that says the wicked one will not touch us. I'm asking for your own I believe that. opinions here. I believe, yeah. Do you feel that bad times can be made into good times because you are saved. Yes. So you believe also then that if you were in our situation, you would do what right now? What would I do? Yeah, what would you do? I you would. keep talking about the Bible right now while we're dealing with physical things on the earth. And guess what you're really doing? You think that you can eat that book and it's gonna sustain you and it's not. So I'm asking you for your personal opinion right now. What would you do in our situation right now? Yeah, I would seek God with all my heart. But you already and seek seek to, God with all your I'm asking what you yeah, but would do. I know, I'm, I'm trying, you know, let I'm me listening. finish. So I would seek him with all my heart and seek to obey every step that I took. Mm -hmm. I would seek to obey, Lord, what is your will? What is your desire? And I would follow him with the purpose of loving him with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength and loving my neighbor. And I would one step at a time, just make sure every step is following Jesus. Believe and then that, if it's a process or if whatever, whatever his purpose and his will is, we can know that we can know that it's good. Fire hydrant. <laughs> you gotta pee. I'll say this. Very good. <laughs> when people have gone through a lot of bad things in their life, one temptation of the enemy is to get them to start questioning God from a stance of feeling like God has wronged them or mistreated them. When giving in to that temptation, people can spiral down into a twisted form of pride called self-pity. When that person places their full focus on themselves in all of their past and present problems, they take their focus off of God, 
the one who can rescue them and often begin to distance themselves from him. They can go about life complaining and grumbling and treating others terribly because their focus is always self-centered and on how mistreated they have been. It can form a mindset that not only God, but other people owe them something in life. These actions lead to a cycle of other people treating them badly, more pain, bitterness, self-pity, and it goes on and on. But when we take our minds off of ourselves and our own problems and place our mind upon Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and salvation, it can change everything in our lives as we turn and trust in Him to set us free from it all. He will completely heal our hearts in every part of our life. No matter what we've been through, God is able to work all things to the good to those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also click one of these videos on the screen to see other amazing things that God has been doing. I'll see you in the next one.